In the previous video in part two of this series, we dove into Cluster API. And Cluster API is essentially managing Kubernetes with Kubernetes. So if you have a Kubernetes cluster, you want to create some more Kubernetes clusters, well, you can go ahead and you can use Cluster API and it'll provision and it'll go through and manage and create and all that good stuff. But what about if you want to use Kubernetes itself not to just manage Kubernetes, that's obviously possible, but also other services, other resources, S3 buckets, Azure Key Vault, virtual machines. What if you want to use Kubernetes as your platform for platform engineering? So pretty much what I'm saying here is we have an underlying platform. Platform engineers, of course, have to manage it and maintain it and all that good stuff. But the good thing is, is that there's one platform. And then everything on top of that platform, the other engineers that aren't platform engineers, the developers, they all have easy, efficient ways to ensure that whatever they're creating is flush. It's all the same as everybody else. There's standards, etc. There's still the separation of concerns, all of that good stuff. Kubernetes becomes the underlying platform. Very much like, oh, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, it does make sense very much like an operating system. So like the operating system is the underlying component of where you're installing your applications, where you have VS code running, where you have Docker running, where you have Kubernetes running, right? Like it's this, it's this kind of layer here and then you build on top of it. And that's kind of like what I'm talking about with Kubernetes. Like you have this layer and then you're building on top of it, Kubernetes being the platform that you're utilizing. So how can we use Kubernetes for that? How can we use Kubernetes to create other resources and manage other services and all that good stuff? Well, that's where Crossplane comes into play. So Crossplane gives us the ability to say, hey, I want to create an Azure virtual network. I want to create an AKS cluster. I want to create an AWS S3 bucket. I want to create an EKS cluster. Whatever we want, as long as it's available as an object. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to set up Crossplane and we'll kind of see what we're working with here. All right, so first things first, you're going to have to install it. So just add the Helm chart, update the Helm chart, and then install Crossplane. And luckily you don't need to set any, you know, you really don't have to set any variables other than like creating the namespace and the namespace itself. But you know, out of the box, it, it works as is. So you don't have to do anything outside of that. All right. So this is exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm running an AKS cluster, QCTL, get nodes. And I'm going to show if you're in AWS, I'm going to show how to do it as well. Cause honestly, the implementation is pretty much the same. The only difference is the APIs and the objects that you're working with. All right. So first I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install that. Okay. So now let's just do a quick kubectl get ns, kubectl get all namespace cross play and system. If I can spell. All right. So that's initializing here. We're going to give it a few minutes. Well, hopefully a few seconds actually. Nope. Never mind. There we are. We're done. <laughs> 24 seconds. Beautiful. All right, so now that that's configured, we can start to set up a few different pieces here. Now I'm gonna show the Azure one because I'm on the Azure cluster right now, or I'm on an AKS cluster. All right, so first things first, I wanna bring down the provider. And what that means is I need to bring down the Azure Crossplane package. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring that down. All right, so we're good to go there. Next, we can run kubectl, get providers, and we see our Azure provider there. All right. Now, the next thing that I need to do is I need to create a method of authenticating to Azure. All right. So really quick, I'm going to pop in here my subscription ID. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this AZ ADSP create for RBAC. So I'm going to create some RBAC. Uh, I think it's like a client ID or an app registration. It's an app registration that gets created for the authentication. So really quick, Regardless of what provider you're working with, whether it's Azure, AWS, GCP, doesn't matter. There are two things you'll always need. The provider, which we saw right here, and the authentication method, which we see right here, all right? So you're always gonna need to authenticate to the platform, and you're always gonna need the provider for the platform, all right? So let's go ahead and run this. And while that's running, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create azure.json, all right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this output and I'm going to put in the Azure.json file. 
All right, so that's now in the Azure.json file. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna CD into crossplane ls. We can see that right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new Kubernetes secret. And this new Kubernetes secret is gonna contain the credentials to authenticate to Azure via crossplane. Now we just have to go ahead and configure the provider to ensure that it collects the secret as in it uses the secret. And boom, that's it. So now what we can do is we can actually go and create a resource. So for example, I have a resource here to create a new virtual network, all right? So let's go ahead and let's run this. All right, and as we can see, that was created successfully. So now let me just go ahead and show you the AWS one really quick. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna create the provider. I'm gonna pull down the provider, right? Next, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the providers. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add my AWS access key and secret ID from IAM. I'll create the secret from it and then I'll update the provider configuration. So again, as you can see, it's pretty much all the same across the board. The biggest difference is the APIs that you're using. And then for example, here's a configuration to create an S3 bucket. So the really awesome thing about Crossplane is again, it's pretty much all the same across the board. The biggest difference is what API you're using, but the standard, the structure, how it looks, it's all the same stuff, which is awesome because you can do multi-cloud, hybrid cloud very, very easily with Crossplane.